Michelle was uh, diagnosed in um, 2004. She had had stomach problems for a while. And she just kept pushing it with her doctor and she had a diagnosis of stage 3C ovarian cancer. She was 43 years old. I think young women, we tend to take on a lot in life. We think there's uh, lots of time to take care of things and we get busy. I think that as a young woman, you need to take time for yourself. And whether that means making that doctor's appointment this week and not next month, do it. Every day in Canada, seven women are diagnosed with ovarian cancer. It is one of the most lethal gynecologic cancers, not only in Canada, but throughout the world. Roughly 70% of women will die of their disease within the first five years of diagnosis. It's been terrible. It's just a terrible, crushing blow. I mean, she was my best friend in the world, my confidant. She was like a second mother to my children. We were together every day. We had so much fun together. And, you know, it's, it's terrible. It's a terrible, terrible loss. Ovarian cancer is when the surface cells of the ovary start replicating at an abnormal rate and moving to other places in the body. From what my doctors told me, uh, I wasn't particularly a candidate uh, for ovarian cancer. I was in good health, uh, I worked out regularly, and I had no history of cancer in my family. When he proceeded to tell me that they had never thought that you know I would be a candidate for ovarian cancer, I became angry. I was just angry because I had never heard of this disease. I didn't know about ovarian cancer. I had an idea of what it was, but um, did not pay a lot of attention to it. So the symptoms of ovarian cancer can be so challenging for many physicians because they're very vague symptoms. They're symptoms that can be explained by a multitude of different diagnoses. With the ovary being located right behind the uterus, it's very hard to feel a mass when you feel through the abdomen. Another way a doctor can examine a woman is by doing a pelvic exam, which is through the vagina. Again, it becomes very difficult with a finger in the vagina to feel this organ up here called the ovary. When I was diagnosed, I was at stage two ovarian cancer. Before I was diagnosed, I found myself tired very easily. When I work in the office, I had sometimes I had to take breaks very often. And I also have a little bit of back pain and my period was messed up. I got prolonged periods, but I thought because I was 50, it's a symptom from menopause. So I ignore all those symptoms. I think it's really important if you have new symptoms that persist for around three weeks, it would be important to get them looked into. So things like abdominal pain and bloating, gas and indigestion, nausea that's new, urinary symptoms, having a change in your bowel habits, menstrual irregularities can do it, back pain, fatigue, significant gain in your weight or a significant weight loss that's not otherwise explainable. The main risk factors for ovarian cancer are an advancing age, so women who are 50 to 79 are at an increased risk of ovarian cancer. Having a personal or a family history of breast cancer, especially if it was premenopausal breast cancer, as well as a history of uterine and colon cancer. Women who have had no pregnancies or have had problems becoming pregnant are at an increased risk. I was sitting in a chair day after my surgery and the doctor came, sat on the bed and said to me, well, it's the worst, ovarian cancer. I was diagnosed with stage three um, and I was 27 years old. And when I went to see my GP and she did a pap smear, I thought, oh, nothing's wrong down there. Well, obviously I, you know, made the association that a pap smear was the all test for everything down there, and that's obviously not the case. I mean, I didn't even think of my ovaries as anything that could ever go wrong. The pap test 
checks for cervical cancer, not ovarian cancer. As well, the HPV vaccine is prevention for most types of cervical cancer, but not ovarian cancer. If a woman has persistent symptoms, as a failing physician, there are a number of tests that you can do. One would be an internal exam to have a closer check of the ovaries. There is an ultrasound you can order called a transvaginal ultrasound. As well, there's a blood test called the CA125, which can be helpful in diagnosis. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer when I was 53 years old, and it was stage 3C. The majority of women who have ovarian cancer, the cancer happened for no known reason. They're a small group of women, about 10 to 15 percent, where they inherited an abnormal gene from their mother or their father. The only risk factor for me ever was that I'm of Jewish Ashkenazi origin where the incidence of having the BRCA1 and 2 gene is, is higher. There are only a small number of women who are diagnosed when the cancer is just in the ovary, about 10 to 15 percent, and it's in those women that we have a great chance of cure, upwards of 90 percent. Usually women present with symptoms and the cancer is already spread throughout the abdomen and that's called stage three. The majority of women, around 60 to 70 percent, present with their disease as stage three. It's very difficult to cure women with this stage. Only about 30 percent of them survive at five years, which is what we consider a cure. I was diagnosed with stage 1C, so I was very lucky. It was very early. In terms of survival, my best recourse would be to have a full hysterectomy with umvectomy. Basically every organ that is connected to making babies would be removed from my body. But definitely more was taken from me. At the time, I had really wanted to be a mother. So for me, that was much more of a, a hurt in my soul than any cut could have made. Surgery plays a role in the treatment by making a diagnosis, identifying how far spread the cancer is, and removing as much cancer as possible. Chemotherapy also has a role in trying to mop up any cells left behind, either before surgery or after surgery. As women, we put all our pains aside and we put our concerns about ourselves aside because we're so busy taking care of others in our lives and other loved ones. And when we hit menopause, of course, we're told women have hot flashes and they have this and they have that. And you really don't want to go and be this, this person who goes to the doctor for every ache and pain. Some women have brought up that they're concerned about coming in for symptoms that might be perceived as small or nonspecific or vague. These are really important changes in your body and you know your body better than anyone else. You know your body and you can suspect when something is not quite right. Even though you're not sure exactly what it is, but you will go to your doctor and explain to your doctor exactly how you feel and don't delay. If a woman with symptoms is feeling like her physician is not hearing her, the most important thing to do would be to mention that and, you know, confront the family physician. And if she persistently feels like she's not being heard, then I would strongly advise her to go see another physician. I think the work of Ovarian Cancer Canada is vital to well women everywhere. Ovarian Cancer Canada is unique to our country. It provides incredible resources, not just for families and patients, but also to the medical community. I would like people to know about ovarian cancer, because ovarian cancer is really a silent killer. That's what's missing right now, is the missing link. If we found a screening test, we could find women, and that statistics that 30% survive will be turned into, on its head, you know, 70% will survive. Being a survivor, I think it's important to reach out to people, talk to your friends, talk to medical professionals. When you get cancer, it's not the end of the world. There's always hope. I've lost a lot. Um, but I've gained so much in these past three years. Definitely the positives outweigh the negatives today. Michelle's experience has had a profound effect on my life. It, it's all of those trite things that you hear, but they're true. 
you know, you have today, you have to live now, you can't put your life off for 10 or 20 years. And it, it really clears all the junk away in your life when you see someone you love go through this disease. You see what they lose and, and then I think you value what you have so much more.